Hello, how are you doing? My name is Judith. You are watching Trapeza TV, the table of heavenly contents. We are broadcasting from Nairobi, Kenya. Let us begin this service with worship. Yeah. 
Praise your name, Jesus. The name above all names. We worship you, we love you, we adore you. You're our Savior and our King. Gentle yet so powerful. You're the Lion and the Lamb. Precious Jesus, all nations will gather to worship you. We choose to worship you right now. They will bow before you. We choose to bow right now. Because all your righteous acts are manifest. And you've delivered us from all nations. 
be your kings and to be your priests. Blessed be your name forever, gracious Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We worship you today. We choose to set everything else aside. And to lift you up and to glorify you, to magnify you in our hearts and our lives. And to decree and declare your rulership and your authority here on earth. Blessing and glorifying your name. And as we lift you up, thank you that you're healing the sick right now. You're delivering the oppressed right now. You're bringing peace to those who are troubled right now. You're giving joy, beauty for ashes for those who are depressed right now. Those who are giving up, you're giving them a fresh injection of life. The resurrection power of the Holy Spirit operating in the lives of your people right now. Thank you for your revelation knowledge. Thank you for the favor you've given us, counting us worthy to preach your glorious gospel to the nations of the world. Precious Father, touch everybody watching us right now. Those under the influence of this broadcast, may your anointing move mightily in their homes through their devices. May they begin to testify right now of your goodness. May those marriages that are on the rocks be restored right now in Jesus' name. May that young lady that wants to commit suicide, may she be delivered right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let hope become her portion all over again. May that Christian that is backsliding, that's no longer interested in the ways of God, may they return back to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. May that prayer warrior who stopped praying because of the difficulties of life, may the spirit of prayer and supplication fill them again. May that family that is in so much trouble and chaos experience the peace from the Prince of Peace. May death be vanquished, cast out and expelled out of people's families, a release upon all of God's people, eternal life, immortality, healing, divine health, prosperity, favor, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our live broadcast. I'm teaching on how to get revelation knowledge. In Greek, we call this Ginosko knowledge. There are different types of knowledge. Last Sunday, I talked to you about Mada knowledge, M-A-D-D-A, -A, which is also called Gnosis in Greek. That is scientific knowledge. And we found that in 2 Chronicles 1 verse 10, where God visits King Solomon in a dream. And God says, ask, what would you like me to do for you? God is still asking that today. He visits you in a dream, but most of you don't know how to interpret dreams. So may think somebody, I saw a president, or I saw a great business person talking to me. God will show up in the body of a human being. Okay, That's why he said, he led captivity captive and gave it to men. And said, a body have you preserved for me. God always appears in the body of a human being, even in your dream. And he might just tell you a simple thing as, you're so favored, and that's it. Now it's up to you to take those words seriously, because God's not going to emphasize anything, because he's the truth. If we lay lots of emphasis on things, it's possible that we, we don't have a fruit faith in the thing we're saying. I don't have to tell you I'm an apostle. You will see it. You don't have to keep saying, I'm an apostle. Okay, hear me. I'm an apostle. No, you will, you, you will tell I am. One of the hallmarks of an apostle is revelation of God's word. Okay? One of the ways to get to know somebody is an apostle. See how they handle the word of God. They depend on the word of God consistently for everything. Okay? One of the ways to know somebody is deceived is when they start talking about their experiences and how they feel and how they think, their opinions, their own mindset. That's called deception, self-deception. But if you want to know somebody is apostolic, the truest mark of an apostle is the ability to explain the revealed word of God. The ability to explain complicated things. Breaking down the word of God so that it makes sense, so that it's practical for you. Okay? 
So if there's got to be a lot of emphasis laid on something, it's either that people are hard of hearing or dull or whatever is being emphasized is not really true. I don't have to tell somebody, especially if you're in a geographic location, that it's daytime. I don't have to emphasize that, okay? So God never emphasizes anything. In fact, the highest level of emphasis is verily, verily, only two times. Truly, truly, I say to you. Just twice. Verily, verily. Okay? So God will appear to you in a dream. Or God will appear to you on a billboard with scriptures written there. And he's talking to you. That's why you saw those scriptures. God will appear to you on Facebook. You get onto Facebook or any form of social media platform. And the first thing you see there is scripture. Or a preacher talking. He's talking to you. Okay? God organized it that at the moment that person is talking, that's also the moment angels cause you to get into that platform. Which means that you actually have capacity to follow the Holy Spirit. But you don't know it's the Holy Spirit. So according to Romans chapter 1, you're not acknowledging him. You think it's your own choice. I decided to go to YouTube and I found this preacher preaching. No, angels were sent by God to move you at that particular time to get onto YouTube at that particular time, to hear a message that will help you at that particular time. And this happens even to those who are not saved because God doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So revelation knowledge is one of the things apostles are known for. And that's what I'm teaching in this broadcast, how to get revelation knowledge or in Greek, ginosko knowledge. Remember there's gnosis, which is scientific. Knowledge you get through experiential study. You read and read and read until you can memorize things or you practice and practice and practice until it becomes part and parcel of your habit. If you are in music, you will repeat until you get the notes right and the words right. That's all called Gnosis. But Gnosis will not save you. Gnosis can make you rich though. Very, very rich, very prosperous, very successful, can give you a reputation out there. People know you because you're a great doctor, a great politician, a great whatever, a great orator, great singer, great dancer, great inventor, and all that. It's called Gnosis. It can bring you the whole world. Gnosis can enable you to gain the whole world. But Gnosis will not save your soul. Okay? That's why the Bible says prophecies will see. Tongues will end. Knowledge, even knowledge, imagine, will come to an end. But there's a higher level that all of you need to rise to. It's called the level of revelation. The level of rema. Logos is academic because it's the entire word. Logos is like a loaf of bread placed before you. Rema is when you take one slice and eat. Okay? If you try to eat that one loaf of bread all at once, you will die. You will choke to death. Okay? As good as bread is. Logos is like, let's say, a glass of water. So I have something in my cup here. This entire thing is Logos. But if I were to decide to drink it all at once, I would choke in a good thing. That's why the Bible says the letter of the law kills. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6. Yeah. Can you please just read that for me? 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6. Yeah. The spirit is life, but the letter, the logos, kills. Grammar, letter is called grammar. In logos is grammar in Greek, okay? So just read it for me. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Okay, so Jesus has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Able there is dunamis, like dynamite. Empowered ministers of the New covenant, okay? Remember that the old covenant was removed because it was weak, the Bible says. It could not take sin away. It could only highlight and punish it, okay? The Old Testament highlighted your faults and then meted out punishment against you because of those faults. Which is why when Jesus came and took our faults upon himself, the old covenant highlighted those faults upon him and killed him. You get that? And having been killed, 
when his blood was found spotless because when you are killed your blood is scrutinized okay anytime you're offered as a sacrifice your blood is scrutinized is this blood so pure that it can wash away the sins of everyone else from now henceforth so when they scrutinize the blood of goats and of calves and of bullocks and of rams they found out if you read hebrews the entire hebrews in fact if you read from chapter four five six seven all the way to eight if you read actually all the way to ten if you read that you'll find out that the blood of sprinkling could not purify the conscience of people even though they were offered every year and the priest the high priest went into the holy of holies with blood for the sins of the Israelites and his sins too. But the Bible said, but this one, after he had offered up his blood, sat down on the right hand side of the Father. Because he purged us our conscience from sin. Sin is a conscience issue. Huh? It is thinking that you're bad. That's called sin. Huh? Thinking that God is angry with you because of some fault. And that conscience is what we call unbelief because you don't know that the blood of Jesus was placed under scrutiny and found to be perfect. So that the sacrifice he offered was accepted before God. So he didn't need to offer it again. You get that? God was appeased once and for all. So he's no longer angry with you. Who is angry with you? The devil. And the devil likes to usurp the authority of God. He likes to take the place of God. To make you think that it's God angry with you and he's the one angry with you. Why is he angry with you? Because you took his place and you're doing a better job than he did. The devil is the devil of envy. Envy is one of the worst things on the face of the earth. As a result of envy, they killed Jesus. Remember what the high priest said when they were talking about Jesus. If you look at the book of uh, John chapter 11, after Lazarus has been raised from the dead, you remember? Lazarus is raised from the dead and the high priest said, this guy is performing so many miracles. Now the whole world is going to follow him and leave us because people are believing in him and these miracles are genuine. He just raised a guy from the dead. In fact, the Pharisees were even planning to kill Lazarus again because they said as a result of his resurrection, so many Jews became Christians, started following Jesus. So they wanted to kill him. They didn't know that if they killed him, Jesus would raise him again from the dead. <laughs> you see but imagine they said the world is following him because of these miracles he's helping people we don't deny that we've been incapable of helping anyone we've never raised the dead we only punish people based on on the law <laughs> yeah and our followers follow us because they are scared of us they are afraid that the moment they don't follow us we'll kick them out of the synagogue and if you're kicked out of the synagogue according to the hebrew culture you don't exist so even if you ask for something, if you talk to someone, they don't answer you back because you don't exist. You see how terrible that was. When a young guy who was blind, if you remember, Jesus opened his eyes. The Bible says they kicked him out of the synagogue. Because he started telling them, if Jesus were a sinner, would he open the, the blind eyes? Has it ever been reported that a sinner opened the, the eyes of a blind person? Yeah? So they kicked him out of the synagogue. As soon as you're kicked out of the synagogue, according to Hebrew culture, you don't exist. If you say hello, no one answers you. Please get me a glass of water. No one answers you. I need some money to do something. Nobody answers you. Until you learn your lesson and go back and serve your sentence, then you are re-admitted. So people follow them. Like today, a lot of people follow preachers because they are scared. Not because of good news. You're just afraid. You're afraid that if you don't show up, you'll die. Or if you don't show up, the grace won't work for you. Or if you move from that church to another one, then you'll be cursed. You see, that's like the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. There's got to be freedom in the body of Christ. Choose to do what's right and be consistent about it. But don't do it out of fear. Do it out of dedication and out of love. Okay? I'm here serving you. Not because somebody cracked a whip behind me saying, serve them or you're dead. No, it's because I love you and I'm dedicated to spreading the love of Jesus Christ all over the world. I'm committed to this thing. Whether somebody pays me or not, doesn't matter. I will do it anyway. If I'm going to use my last dime to do this thing, I will do it anyway. There won't be a single day that you will not find good news. 
on social media posted by me and my team. Not one day. There will always be good news. There is every single day there's an opportunity for people to get saved on my page, on YouTube, all the social media platforms. There's an opportunity for someone to get saved. There's an opportunity for healing. There's an opportunity for deliverance. There's an opportunity for maturity and growth on a daily basis. I'm committed to it, not because somebody forced me, but because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the love of God constrains us. The love of God will cause you to wake up in the night to pray for somebody. Okay? All of you need to learn that. How to use the love of God to do the things that you do. So that you're not easily discouraged. You see, even when people persecute us, even when they slander us, we continue to preach. There are certain people who, are, who easily give up. One attack like this, they want to give up. Or they want to change their methodology. Yeah? See, when John the Baptist was called by God and he was told to wear a skin and to eat locusts and honey, he had to do that. He stuck to it. They, they called him a madman because of the way he was dressed. Mm -hmm. He didn't change his dressing because you're angry. Because it's God who told him to act like that. You see? There's a, a man of God, a prophet who was told to walk naked for three years, stark naked, and to lie on, on only one side for three straight years. On top of that, he was told to use his own waste as fuel for cooking. Yeah? His own feces. Let me tell you, when God works with you, he will baffle the world. He will cause you to do things that make people, you know, think you're crazy. Because the Bible says he likes to choose the foolish things of the world to confound those who think they're smart. You'll say, surely God can't choose such a weird fellow. That's God's way. He uses those that look foolish to confound your wisdom. Especially because your wisdom comes from nurses, academics. Someone, I want to move you to the level of revelation. Okay? Revelation. So the Pharisees got Jesus crucified because they were envious of his success and prosperity. He was so successful as a minister. He did things the Pharisees could not do. So instead of them joining him, you know what they did? They said, let's take him out. But the Bible says, had they known, they would not have crucified Jesus. Had they known. You see, had they known, the word knowing there is idol, which is a higher level of revelation. Had they known, they knew academically, but they did not know through revelation. And the Bible says, if they knew who this guy was through revelation, they would not have crucified him. You see? So if you know things academically only, you can succeed in natural sensory perception things, things of the world. You can succeed as a doctor. You can succeed as anything. But you're going to fail miserably in spiritual matters. In fact, spiritual matters will look embarrassingly foolish to you. When we start talking in tongues, you close your eyes and you want to walk away because it's embarrassing. See, tongues is spiritual. It's the realm of the spirit. And those who listen to us academically will never, ever get it. So you have to rise to the level of ginosko. So this is revelation knowledge. So when you read the Bible, you understand the Bible academically. Like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. So you know, oh, God did what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you have comprehended the text. But has the text been turned into revelation, experiential knowledge for you? Has the text become part and parcel of the cells of your body? Has the text and your spirit become one thing? If that's not the case, then you are drinking water all at once and choking and coughing. You have not reached a level of rema where you take one gulp. Broken down in a way that helps your body. That water has entered my body now. Ladies and gentlemen, it becomes very difficult henceforth to separate that water from you. Yeah? Because it's going to enter into, through assimilation, it's going to enter into every part of my body to become a source of life. So it's a life-giving spirit mm -hmm. to my body. So that I'm able to talk to you, so that my spirit is able to animate my 
body parts, my hands, my mouth, my eyes and all that. So the water is no longer logos in a container. It's now rema, broken down in a way that is beneficial to me. That's how the word of God is. You see, John 3.16 is logos. But the moment I start having the revelation of who God is, for God so loved, the word love there is agape, sacrificial love, where he chooses out of his own goodness to be kind to you, not because of anything you've done. Not only that, he loved and gave. So I begin to get the revelation that loving is equal to giving. If you love Jesus, you will give to help propagate his word. You see, I've preached so many times to people that giving tithes and offerings and all those things will not make you rich. But giving out of love will bring you a blessing. When you have that blessing, whatsoever you do shall prosper. But you see, some people who don't have revelation will not say, oh, you mean if I don't give, if I don't give, uh, there's no big deal. So if giving is not going to translate to money, then I shouldn't give at all. That's foolishness. It's a lack of revelation. See, so the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus said in John 4, 23, that God is looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. And one of the ways to worship God is by giving. But some people decide, oh, apostles said giving tithe and offerings is not going to bring you money. That's true. We don't give to get money. We give because we love. But when we give because we love, we are worshiping. And when we worship, we are blessed. You come out of that place blessed. Look, 2 Chronicles 1.10, where Solomon asks for wisdom and MADA, M-A-D-D-A, that academic knowledge, scientific knowledge. Do you know why God visited him in the night? Because previously he had given over 1,000 bullocks as sacrifice to God. He had given so much to bless the house of God. He had given so much to bless the priests that served God in the temple. Until God visited him and said, look, I'm so pleased by your sacrifice, by your giving. So now tell me, what can I give to you? Are you seeing that? He says, give me wisdom and knowledge. And God said, perfect, you've asked the best thing because wisdom is the principal thing. And you need knowledge to be a good politician. <laughs> okay. You need knowledge to make more money. You need academic knowledge to make money. Right? And God said, I'm giving you wisdom and knowledge. But I'm also going to give you riches and wealth. Do you see how it works? Mm -hmm. So what is it that provoked God to ask such a telling question? The giving of Solomon. So a person who has that revelation never stops giving. They don't become lazy in sacrificing by giving. Especially to help propagate the gospel. You get that? So don't stop giving to your church. Don't stop giving to your man or woman of God. Don't stop giving. The only thing is that be wise so that you understand what giving is. You just don't do tight because give 10% to the Lord. You need to have a revelation of giving so that giving helps you. Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So we give because we are connecting our hearts to Jesus and to the things he's doing. To establish his kingdom on earth and to expand it. So my heart goes where my money goes. Okay? So if I really love the work of God, then my treasure will need to go there. You see that? That's what my wife and I do all the time. We do that all the time. Sometimes all that we have, we clean up everything we have for the sake of the gospel. I remember there's a time we did a transaction and after finishing the transaction, I think we got, what, about 20,000 US dollars or something? The entire amount we dedicated to equipment to reach you on social media. The entire amount. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you online is expensive. It's not cheap. It costs. And we did a deal and took the entire amount, no profit, nothing, and dedicated it to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you like that? Could that be the reason why there's so much trouble in your life? You're tight-fisted, you hold on to money like this. And you find yourself happy to fund pleasurable things. 
and it's quite uncomfortable finding the gospel of Jesus because you don't have revelation knowledge. Ginosko. So Ginosko is after you've learned the word, then the Spirit of God explains to you, turns that word into rema, into life, something that can help you directly. Okay. Otherwise, you'll use the gospel as a whip to punish people. You'll use the word of God to whip people. You'll always be using the word of God to find out faults in people. You say you're a Christian. How come you got angry? Where did you read that for? The Bible says be angry and sin not. So Christians can get angry. The only thing they mustn't do is sin after they're angry. Okay? You see, you need a revelation of the word of God. Even to give you the word ginosko is a revelation. The Spirit of God tells you, look it up in Greek. It gives you a better understanding. Okay? So ginosko is the level of revelation. And this is activated when you talk in tongues. Remember, tongues already a spiritual language. It's not an academic language like what I'm speaking now. This is English. I'm speaking grammar, the letter. But when I begin to talk in tongues, I move to the spiritual realm. Which is why when you talk in tongues, you always get your answer. Because it's not contaminated by your academic knowledge. Because academic knowledge is the wisdom of the world which comes to nothing. So you pray with your understanding, you will use the wisdom of the world, and your prayer comes to nothing. But when you pray in tongues, you're using the wisdom that's from above, which is pure, you know, peaceable. Okay? That wisdom will bring you the results you're looking for. So that's revelation. So when you talk in tongues, you get revelation. After tongues, you know what happens? You open the Bible and the Bible becomes alive. Now it makes sense. You've moved from Gnosis or Mada, scientific knowledge, to revelation knowledge, Ginosko. Okay? Another way of activating revelation knowledge is by fasting. It's so important. Fasting. My wife and I are given to fasting. We fast every single day. Okay? Every single day we are fasting. All right? Somebody asked me on Facebook. They, <laughs> they've known me for many years. And they said, how are you able to keep your body so trim and fit? I said, fasting. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, you get fat because of gluttony. It's not genes. Mm -mm. It's gluttony. It's your appetite. If you can control that appetite, if you can control that appetite and then do physical fitness, you'll be fine. Okay? But the most beautiful thing about fasting is that it gives your spirit preeminence and gives your spirit the freedom to express itself. Then when God speaks, your spirit picks up the signals quickly. So when you read the Bible, the Spirit of God is always there ready to teach you. The Spirit of God loves you when you read the Word. So as you read, He's there, ready to teach you. Okay? The Bible says the anointing is within you, First John 1, 27. And you don't need that anybody should teach you anything. But that anointing teaches you all things. So as you open the Bible to read, the Spirit of God begins to teach you. In John 14, 26, the Bible says, But the Comforter that the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things. And also remind you of the things I've taught you. So sometimes you may forget. But the Spirit of God will teach you. So if you pray in tongues and you're fasting, the Spirit of God will find expression because you're now alert. Yeah? If you're talking to me and I'm preoccupied with something else, maybe I'm typing something, you may call me three or four times and I won't even hear you. You might even call very loudly, but I'm so preoccupied and so focused that I'm not hearing you. You might have to tap me. That's when I'll turn around and say, oh. And then you'll say, I've been calling you the last five times. Oh my goodness, I didn't, what? Hear you. Why? Because I was occupied doing something else. When you fast, those preoccupations are removed. So when the Spirit of God whispers, because he likes to use a still small voice, you will hear him. Okay? So fasting will lift you up to revelation knowledge. You get that? Another one is meditating on the word of God. What is meditation? Hagar in Hebrew, meditating on the word of God. It means to mumble it, speak it. Don't mumble what you are annoyed about. That's negative meditation. These people are always disturbing you. What was wrong with these people? I'm not going to allow that anymore. You see, when someone is angry and they're walking away, they walk away meditating. They roll that pain, that problem over and over in their minds. 
And as they do, their anger level rises. You get that? Yeah. And as the anger level rises, the ability and the power to revenge is granted them by the devil. You get me? So by the time they are done and they're sending your message, it's poisonous. Because it's anointed by the devil. Because you're meditating on the devil's ways. You're mumbling negativity. How could they treat me like that? How could they embarrass me like that? I go to that place. They should have somebody should have pulled me to the side and talk. You see, you, you don't you don't hear everything they say, but they mumble. Yeah? What are you saying? Nothing. That's meditation. What if you chose to meditate on the word of God? You went for a job interview and you knew you're gonna get the job, and somebody was bribed and then took your place. So instead of leaving the place mumbling, saying, oh, these guys are corrupt. Oh, how could they do that to me? Oh, that, was, that was the best interviewee in this thing. And all this other thing. And look at them. Just because the person comes from their tribe, that's why they got the job. Um, that's called negative meditation. It will kill you. Because it makes you want to revenge. And that is people foolishly revenge on Facebook. They go and type the whole thing on Facebook. All their pain. As if Facebook saved you. Huh? It's true that you need expression, but please express yourself in a forum where you can be helped. Okay? So they mumble and make all those noises instead of saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, judgment shall condemn. This is my heritage, some of the Lord. My righteousness from me, Lord of hosts. That's meditation. Rolling the word of God in your mind consistently over and over again. Yeah? When you do that, you reach the level of ginosko, revelation. As you think that word, the Spirit of God will teach you an aspect of it you never saw. Yeah? As you keep thinking, Isaiah 54 verse 17, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. All right. All the tongues that rose against me in judgment or are still rising against me in judgment, I'm condemning you now in Jesus' name. As you do that, those tongues are shut. The Bible says their tongues are divided. And their wisdom is turned into foolishness. Then they start making mistakes to advance your cause. Yeah? Because you spoke the revealed word. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment now. Any witch that is making incantations. Speaking my name. Using my picture or that of my family members. Aiming to kill. Aiming to maim, aiming to impoverish, aiming to scatter. I condemn that tongue in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that's revelation. Instead of complaining, I'm fixing it. Okay? So when you reach the level of revelation, you say, whoever is slandering me, because slander is witchcraft. When you're being slandered, you start failing in life. That's why they do it. It works. Okay? When people talk ill of you, you start failing in life. That's why in Galatians 3, verse 1, Paul says, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You guys started in the spirit. Now you're back to the flesh. Somebody has been talking negatively against you and you believed it. Somebody told you, Paul is not genuine. Why are you following that bad guy? You know, this used to be a murderer. He's just pretending. He might just go back to his murderous act. And somebody believed it. You see, you, you see, when people gossip, when people talk ill about your man of God, your woman of God, don't believe it. They are bewitching you. So that you move from revelation back to the flesh. Then you start participating in the law which kills. Now you become the accuser of brethren. And the Bible says, Satan, the word Satan, the word Satan is an opposer, someone who opposes. So the devil, Satan doesn't have to show up as long as he can use you to oppose me. Okay? That's why Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, opposer, Satan. You're a stumbling block to my calling. Yeah? Because Peter was busy advising Jesus how to be prim and proper as a minister. All this thing about being crucified and all that controversial stuff. Leave them. So people can love you. huh? Jesus said you are the devil. Satan. The devil is a slanderer. The word diabolo. Slanderer. So if you're given to gossip and slander. The devil does not need to do any work. You're working for him. You're his minister. 
You're his servant. You preach for him. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. You see, this is why I take people on who speak negative things on my Facebook post. Mm -hmm. I will crush you the way I crushed the head of the serpent. Yeah? Because I know how the devil works. I know when the devil is on my post. I know when the devil is inboxing me. Mm -hmm. I know when the devil is talking to me. I know when the devil is calling. I know. I can tell from how you slander, how you gossip, how you attack. I can tell. I know when a pig is talking, granted. I know when a dog is talking. Okay? Because pigs like tearing people down. Dogs like tearing people down. They trample on precious things. You speak a good message, they won't hear that. They go for something else. The devil's nature, the devil is smart, okay? He's handled humanity for thousands of years. Don't be his minister, a person he writes on. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. So you got to rise. Don't mumble negatives. Don't complain. When people complain, they die. They kill their dreams and ambitions. And they ultimately physically die. I know people that I ministered to who I told, please stop complaining. Please don't complain. But they never listened. They died. Yeah? Meditate on the word of God, then you'll enter the realm of revelation. Meditation. Okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Don't say, that's in, my, in, in our language in Kenya. What shall we eat? Usually when people are negative, they start using either slang or their mother tongue. Yeah? Because it's more expressive. Slang is usually quite expressive, quite spiritual. Yeah? Don't complain. That takes you to the flesh. Instead, mumble, shout, mutter, roar, sing, whisper the word of God. Okay? Speak the word over the situation. Has somebody hurt you? Don't say, you dare hurt me like that. You wait. I'll get you as well. Then you start looking for ways to hit back, ways to revenge, ways to hurt them back. That's horrible. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, pray for those who mistreat you. Bless those who curse you. Okay? Love those who hate you. But if you don't have the revelation of love, you will hate those who hate you right back with a higher level of hatred. You will curse those who mistreat you instead of praying for them. I've seen preachers releasing fire and brimstone on people's enemies. Your enemy, catch fire. See, that's lack of wisdom, lack of revelation. What did Jesus say? Even on the cross, what did Jesus say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's revelation of love. A lot of people think love is just a feeling between male and female. This strong feeling. Ladies and gentlemen, it reaches a point where there's no feeling anymore between male and female. Nothing. Zero. Will you still love? Remember, strong emotions and strong feelings are supposed to jumpstart you. It's like the ignition of a car. But after the car is ignited, you don't continue igniting. Now you drive it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that strong feeling of attraction and excitement that you have towards the, the opposite sex will end. It will end. Meaning, the relationship has already been ignited. Okay? It's been stirred up. Now you need to build it up using building blocks of a marriage so then you need revelation of what marriage is. You need gnosko of what marriage is. Otherwise, you'll walk out of that marriage or sabotage it. That way you always sabotage other relationships. Why do you sabotage relationships? Because you have no revelation of love. You have no re revelation of communion. Companionship. Togetherness. You don't have the revelation. So it reaches a point where you run out. Then you get bored. Then you get put off. Then you start doing things contrary to the relationships. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? If you eat food or drink, I have water in here. So if I drink this water, and I get another cup and drink, and another cup, I'll reach a point where I'm satiated. I've reached the end. So I don't want the water anymore. Are you getting it? Until I time off, thirst again. If you run your relationship like that, woe unto you. Huh? Because you will be so saturated by all the things you ever desired in a relationship. 
up to a point where you feel like vomiting. Then you'll turn your anger, distaste, dislike against this fellow. Because you're using them as a drug. A drug. You use them as a drug to help mask and to help cure the pain you felt of loneliness. And now that you're saturated and you're supposed to go to a higher level, you sabotage. It's how most marriages break. It's how most relationships break. So and so used to be my best friend. I don't know what happened. It's because you're using each other's drugs. You're smoking each other's if you're cannabis. You're getting a high from each other. Instead of lifting each other to a higher level. One of the reasons the relationship between a, a child and a mother is so difficult to break. It doesn't matter how wayward the child is. You can't break the relationship between a child and a, a mother. It's because the mother started off the relationship in a way that's sacrificial. Not in a way that's emotional. Are you getting me? So the mother was the very lifeblood of this baby. In the womb, the mother doesn't know what the baby looks like, but she's there. So happy, guarding her womb because there's, there's life in there. Then she sacrifices, feeling pain to give birth. After that, this child is like a, it's like a pest. Yeah? There's nothing they're giving to you. But the mother is dedicated to the child. Dedicated to the, the, the growth of the child. The health of the child. The comfort of the child. Cleaning them up. Dutifully sacrificing. That's why that relationship is impossible to break. But do you know fathers and their children drift apart so easily? Do you know why? Because the father has not participated as much in raising the child. Other than just providing money. And a big voice and a little security. Yeah? So fathers are encouraged to get involved in the raising of the child. Actively. So that the relationship between the child and the father also won't break. This is why it's easy for a man to make a woman pregnant and walk away. Huh? But the woman will not walk away from that child. Unless some fool impresses upon her, convinces her to abort. But abortion is not always the first thing in the mind of a woman. No. It's raising my child. It's the first thing in her mind. But someone will come and convince her, you know, you're still young, you're this young. What will people say? What will the child say? What, what, what? You know, a slanderer said by the devil will come and talk and then you abort. When the man has walked away, then he goes, makes another one pregnant, walks away. Why? Because he has never sacrificed to develop a relationship with anyone. You see that? He has no sacrifice. He can't take a beating because of you. He can't be patient with you in, your, in the days when you're difficult. When you're not compliant, it's just difficult. But this person is always there for you. The mother is always there for the child when the child is difficult, stubborn. You know, sometimes children even want to beat up their parents. You find the mother is crying. But she still wants a relationship with this child. Huh? The father will say, I don't want to see you ever again. That's it. He's gone. He's gone. Have you seen the people who disown their children? Are they usually mothers? Are they usually mothers? Who participate in the disowning of children? Usually in the family. The father. Because the fool did not participate in sacrificing for the survival of a child. So it's easy for him to disown. You will not disown something you value. You will not disown something you sacrificed and invested significantly in. You won't disown it. No. You'll say even if I look like a fool, I put my entire life into this thing. I'll fight for it to the end. Huh? You see. So, you need a revelation of love so that you sacrifice. You see, God is love. He operates a level of Gnostic revelation. This is why he sacrificed for you. Jesus sacrificed for the marriage. There's a marriage coming up and Jesus sacrificed in advance for it. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's why Jesus never fails. He doesn't go with how it feels. He goes with sacrifice. He goes with revelation. What's the revelation of Mary? That I should wash my wife with the washing of water by the word. So it doesn't matter how messed up she is. I'm not quitting. 
And when she understands the revelation of marriage and the role of her husband, it doesn't matter how messed up I may appear, she is not quitting. Because the Bible says, if you faint not, if you faint not, what happens? You shall be rewarded. How many people wait for the reward? Too many faint because they don't have a revelation of marriage, of family, of money, of peace. Everything needs to operate at the level of revelation. Ginosko, okay? John 8, 32. And you shall know, Ginosko, the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's not all truth that will free you. It's the revealed one, the revelation one. Okay? Academic truth will not free you. In fact, academic truth makes you more afraid. Do you know why? The doctor examines you academically and tells you stage four cancer in your body. What does that knowledge give you? Freedom? No. Fear. In fact, it's after that knowledge that you start to die because an authority has introduced death in your system. You tell me stage what, even whatever stage of cancer. I'll say by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are already healed. Do you believe that? Do you believe you are healed? Okay, now take your hands according to Mark 16, 17 to 18. Place your hands where the cancer is and command it to leave you in Jesus' name. And do that even if it takes you five years. Do it on a daily basis. Because if a doctor told you to be on a certain medication for five years, you never refuse, would you? When we preachers tell you, pray this prayer daily. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. When the doctor tells you, take this medicine or you're dead, you never forget. So you see, your academic knowledge cannot free you. Your academic knowledge binds you because of fear. Even if it's helpful in other areas. But revelation knowledge is the one that will free you. You shall know Ginosko. This now it's not Gnosis. Ginosko. Revelation. Experiential knowledge. Where what you know and your body becomes one. So when the Bible says by his stripes you have been healed. The word healed. Rafa. Jehovah Rafa. The one who heals. The word healed becomes part of your cells. If healed is part of your cells. Anytime pathogens come in. The cells will fight and defeat the pathogen. Because the cell is stamped with healed. Healed, not sick, sick, sick. Are you getting me? Now, pathogens only up, they only operate in an environment that is conducive for disease and sickness. Okay? For example, at the gnosis level, at the academic level, at the academic level, the gnosis level, do you know what happens? If your body is acidic, then virus and bacteria will be jumping and doing push-ups and, and they'll be so happy because that's what they love. They love mucus. And mucus, where there is mucus, there is always acidity. Are you getting me? Now, if academically you change that environment and make it alkalinic, alkaline, turn it from pH 6 to pH 7, the bacteria, without being challenged at all, Without being told to leave, they'll say, this environment is not conducive for our survival. We are out of here. That's in the Gnosis academic level. Are you getting that? But after you have made your body alkalinic, 7.4 especially, is ideal. But after you've done that, and bacteria is no longer operational, demons are not affected by academics. Because demons operate at the level of revelation. So the demons will start forcing viruses, even in an environment that's alkaline. Okay? The only way out now is for the demon to find every cell of your body stamped healed, 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 healed. The Bible, the Bible, the word of God. The truth is now making you a free person. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not set you free. It makes you free. In other words, you have been made as a free agent. So anything that tries to bind you cannot. You're made free. Okay? So the devil tries to bind you, but finds in your body, it's written freedom, 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 freedom. It's like going to South Africa and reintroducing appetite. It's impossible. They are now free from appetite. Are you getting me? Huh? 
So Jesus has freed you. This is revelation now. You say the level of revelation is good for you. You know this scripture, John 8, 32, but you didn't know it like this because you didn't have a revelation of the scripture. And you shall gain gospel. You shall have a revelation of the truth. Yeah? What is the truth? The Bible says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. You shall have a revelation of Jesus. And that revelation shall do what? Make you free. So you are taken and made and stamped free. This one is free. Made free. So if the devil comes, he wants an environment where it's easy to bind people. An environment where he's told, okay, these are your prisoners. These ones are guilty, so bind them. The devil comes and finds you're not guilty. You're not a prisoner. You cannot be bound. So what does he do? He leaves you alone. You don't even need to cast him out. But you, you can't reach there until you have revelation of the truth. And I told you talk in tongues, fast, worship, love, give, be a giver, give money, give money especially to help propagate the gospel. Revelation will hit you. Because Solomon got revelation by giving. He got a revelation in, the, in a dream. Of, G of Jesus talking to him, telling him, what can I give to you? Then he asked for the right thing. Because in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, the mother Bathsheba taught him, I was tender in the eyes of my mother, and I was the son of my father. According to Hebrew culture, when you're called the son of my father, it means the father has trained you. And in Proverbs 4, verse 7, the father says, wisdom is the principal thing. Go for wisdom, my son. And when you've gone for it, go for knowledge. So when God appears in 2 Chronicles 1 verse 10, what does Solomon ask for? What the father taught him. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Are you getting that? If I'm teaching you the word, the Bible says share good things with the one who teaches you the word. If you don't have a revelation of a teacher, a rabbi, the one who teaches the word of God, then you will not have a revelation of giving. So guess what you'll do? You'll give to things that rot, that mock and rust, that corrupt. You'll put your treasures in the wrong places. And you'll think you're succeeding. When you're actually just giving the devil material to work with. Are you getting me? You need a revelation of giving. Solomon was taught by the Father. His giving moved God to speak to him. After that, God said, ah, I'm going to give you wealth and riches that nobody has ever had. Because of this thing you asked for. Are you getting me? Revelation. So when the devil comes to attack you, sickness and disease, even death itself, and the devil finds you have eternal life, the devil will say, okay, I'm not able to work in a place where life is eternal. I like to work in a place where life is limited, where it's mortal. I enjoy mortality. But if you've read 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, that God, Jesus Christ, abolished death and brought immortality to the life. Mm -hmm. So when the devil comes to my body with sickness, with it, corona, what? He finds there's immortality. So the power to activate death cannot work. It's like you are charging this phone with a wrong charger. It won't work. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've been made with these specifications. So for you to bring anything in here, you need to be the right charger. For this thing to enter my body, for the virus to enter my body, for bacteria to enter my body, I need to be compliant. My specifications should be compatible with the devil. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. But now my specifications are compatible with God. So the truth that I have, a revelation of, makes me compatible with that very truth. Mm -hmm. So I become incompatible with any other thing brought by the devil. Okay? Mm. Are you getting it? Mm. Ah. So it doesn't set you free. Setting somebody free is like they were bound and now you remove the shackles and tell them, go. That's not what the Bible says. Mm. This is a manufacturing. Mm. You're made again. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Bible says. When you look at the word of God, you're turning to that same image. You start looking like him. It makes you like him. So here I am, free from sickness, so I don't fall sick. And if anything tries to get into my body, my body will fight it because it's not compatible. It's breaking in and my body says, no, we are not compatible. Whatever you're bringing won't enter to this body. It will fight. 
A few days later, I'm good. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't age. Our bodies are not made for aging. It's incompatible with aging because the aging process is a death process. My body is compatible with life, not death. If somebody gets this, you'll never complain again in your life about anything. Because your complaints are compatibility issues. If you're compatible with the devil, you complain all your life. If you're compatible with God, you will defeat him all his life, if that makes sense. Yeah? So John 8.32 has made sense today, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Because I have revealed it to you. That's the apostolic calling God has given you. To reveal the word so that you can apply it correctly. Now when you read John 8.32, it's easy to apply. Right? Mm -hmm. I've broken it down from the big loaf of bread that would have choked you to a small bit that you can chew. And can give you nutrition. Alright? Mm -hmm. I wish I could just stop there. Let me give you a few more scriptures. Ephesians 3.19. It says, And to know the love of Christ. And to ginosko, the love of Christ. Revelation of the love of Christ will make a husband love a wife. Ah. Revelation of the love of Christ will make a wife to submit to the husband. Revelation of the love of Christ will cause your family to live in peace. Revelation of the love of Christ will cause your society to live in peace. This is what transforms people. So Paul is praying that for you to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Now hear this. To know the love of Jesus Christ, this love passes gnosis, academic knowledge. Are you seeing the difference? Mm. To know, ginosko, to have a revelation of the love of Christ, and that revelation of love of Christ will pass academic knowledge, gnosis. That way, you will be filled with all the fullness of God. After you are filled with the fullness of God, is there space for a demon? But how do you become full of the fullness of God? You must have a revelation of how Jesus loves. Okay? You must know the love of Jesus academically because it passes gnosis. It means it's supposed to go beyond gnosis, beyond academics. You need to know how Jesus loves. Once you have the knowledge of how Jesus loves, the revelation of how he loves, you will be smarter than the cleverest academician, okay? Because it passes gnosis, academic knowledge. And once you are beyond academic knowledge, so that you are beyond academic knowledge of sickness, you're beyond academic knowledge of the economy, money, you're beyond academic knowledge of marriage. Because academic knowledge of marriage is biological. She's attractive, so I'm attracted to her biology. That's academic knowledge. But revelation of the love of Jesus takes me beyond attraction to revelation of love then i can sacrifice without complaining are you getting me yeah. so if she makes a mistake i will not complain rather i will do what jesus did for god so loved the world that he gave so i will give whether she's right or wrong whether she's made up or messed up are you getting me which is how it then becomes impossible for her to do anything that will cause me to divorce her. Impossible. Why? I have a revelation of love. That's why Jesus said, nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Not principalities, not powers. It's Paul who said it. But of course, what Paul said, Jesus said. In the book of Romans chapter 8 from, you know, verse 31. Going on, 37. 37. Who shall, can just read it for us? Romans 8, 37. What can separate me from the love of Christ? Once there's a revelation of his love, nothing can separate you from him. Okay? So you need to have revelation. Talk in tongues, knowing that as you do, revelation comes. Fast, knowing that as you do, revelation comes. Worship, knowing that as you do, revelation comes. That's why we were lifting our hands earlier. Worshiping Jesus. It's not just about good voices. We are worshiping. When you worship, you become like the one you worship. It's called a revelation. Consummation. Okay? And then be a giver. Don't stop giving. Have a revelation of money. Have a revelation of love. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So I cannot love her without giving to her. You cannot love Jesus without giving to his work. Okay? This is beyond tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings is academic. Yeah? Sending your heart on wings of your money is revelation. Did you get that? Sending your heart to Jesus. I, I give my heart to you. See, there's a song we 
we both, yeah? You are my treasure, my heart is in you. It was about giving. That song is about giving. Okay? You're my exceeding great reward. You're my desire. You've got my affection. With all I am, I worship you. I give my love to you. I give my all to you. With my possessions, I worship you, Lord. Oh, how I treasure your love for me, Lord. So with my treasures, I worship you. Even a song like that needs revelation. Okay? So I worship God with all my money. I cannot see the gospel suffering. I have to put my money there. This thing must be known. If this message is so good, it's helped you so much. Would you not be so loving as to ensure other people get it? To boost this message costs money on Facebook. I'm happy to use my own money to do it. But would you not be blessed if you participated? Oh, but Apostle, he said, if you give tithes, you won't get rich after all. Riches come because of business acumen. That's true. But do you have a revelation of love? There is no love without giving. Okay. So when you have a revelation of the love of Jesus Christ, what happens to you? Then you become filled with the fullness of God. Once you're full of God, where can the devil get space to attack you? Where? Where can his minions and machinations then become active? Where? How? And you're full of the fullness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Everyone is complaining. Somebody sent me a message on Facebook. said, you're always so happy, you and your wife. You guys are looking like you're so on top of the world. I said, yes, we're always happy we're on top of the world. Yeah? Everyone is suffering. People don't have money. How come you guys are just okay? <laughs> We, we have a revelation of life. Yeah? Nothing puts us down. Because we are full of the fullness of God. Can you just read that scripture for us? Yeah? What does it say? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Mm -hmm. For I am persuaded that neither death... Take it, take it a, bit, a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. From 35, that's what I was looking for. Yeah? Uh-huh. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love. love of Christ? When you have a revelation of the love of Jesus, then no one can separate you from the one you love. Nothing. Okay. What are these things that usually separate people? He's enumerated them. Shall tribulation? Can tribulation separate you from the one you love? Uh -huh. Or distress? Can distress separate you? Uh -huh. Or persecution? Can persecution separate you? Or famine? Can farming, lack of money, separate you from your spouse? There's some stupid people. As soon as their spouse doesn't have money, they're, they're gone. Stupidity of the highest order. You have no revelation of love. You are a pest that entered that relationship. You're not a candidate of love. You need to be fumigated. Come on. Uh -huh. Or nakedness? Nakedness. We can't even afford clothes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or peril? Peril. Oh my goodness, I'm in debt up to my nose. You know how lawyers tell you? That... If you don't pay this money, we are not going to talk to you anymore. But we're going to take action to your peril. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Perilous times. Things are difficult. Uh -huh. Or a sword. Somebody wants to pierce you with a sword. Mm. There's war. That nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. None of those things can separate me from the love of Christ. But the Bible says here, Ephesians 3.19, to have a revelation of the love of Christ, which passes academic knowledge, that way you're filled with all the fullness of God. Once I have a revelation of the love of Christ, how can I give up on you? If even so, they, they are threatening to shoot me, I'll still say, no, I'm not giving up, because I have a revelation of this love. See, that's why they jailed me in my country, to stop me from preaching. I'm preaching much harder now. I'm reaching more people now than ever before. Right there in jail, I preached. Huh? I'm telling you, my jailer was a, a Muslim guy, so he used to call me Sheikh. He'd wake me up early in the morning in custody. Sheikh, have you had breakfast? Sheikh. Then he'd bring me certain things, a newspaper to, to read. Things that he was not supposed to do according to law. But he'd sneak me a newspaper, so I'd get to read to see how, what they're saying about me. Because that time I was all over media. Yeah? And I would read the newspaper and say, oh, the devil is out there slandering and all that. Yeah? Are you getting me? I preached there in that place. 
until people began to believe in Jesus Christ in Pastor B. I came out, and the very next day I was preaching. If you have a revelation of the love of Christ, even a gun stuck to your head won't stop you. I remember people telling me during that time, why can't you just stick to music? When you play music, nobody bothers you. But when you start this preaching thing, everybody's against you. Why can't you just do the thing that we love you for, jazz maestro? The love of Jesus constrains me. I can't quit preaching. I can quit everything else, but not this gospel. All right? Because I have a revelation of it. Are you getting that? All right. First Corinthians. 13, 12. For now, we see through a glass dimly, but then face to face. For now, we have partial revelation. We know that word is ginosko. But then, we shall epigenosko. As in, the Spirit of God enters you, now you become thoroughly acquainted with these things. That's what we call epigenosko. It is on top of ginosko, epi. Yeah? I shall know even as also I am known. That Jesus has, is thoroughly acquainted with you. You are acquainted with my ways, the Bible says. Psalm 139. You know my sitting down, my rising. Even if I go to the dawn, you are there with me. Even if I go to the setting of the sun, you are there with me. Even to hell, you are there with me. Yeah. What shall separate me from the love of Christ? Nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. You read Psalm 139, you'll find these things there. 138, 139. Beautiful scriptures. Yeah. So he knows you. He knows you that well. And the Bible says, you shall be known, even, you know, that, uh, but then shall I, I will also know the way he knows me. Now, that's what we call revelation of the love of Christ. Are you getting that? Does that make sense? Yeah. I've given you a few scriptures, but I've given you loaded information. You want to succeed as a child of God, talk in tongues so that you can have revelation. Tongues is not just a sign of spirituality. That now you're looking more spiritual. No, this thing is a lifeblood. It's life. Talk in tongues so that you can rise to revelation knowledge. Fast. You don't have to injure yourself when fasting. Do what you can manage, but fast. Okay? All right? You don't have to do 40 days, 40 nights, you know, without water or food. No. And you see, you can only do that fast if God has told you specifically to do it. Yeah, like Moses fasted 40 days, 40 nights, no food, nothing. He comes down, finds the Israelites are worshipping strange things. He goes back again for another 40 days, 40 nights. Yeah, when you're with life himself, you don't need food. Okay, so there are prophets God tells to fast like that. And they don't die because God has a way of feeding them. All right. If you try, and God didn't tell you specifically to do it for a specific purpose, you will die too. And you start saying, oh, why did, why did our, our, our family member die and yet they were fasting? God is not kind. God is mean. Isn't it in the name of the Lord they were fasting? But they were fasting without revelation of what fasting is. Yeah? Are you getting this? So everything must be done based on ginosko. From Gnosis academic to ginosko. I'm still going to teach on this one, but I'm going to teach based on what we call yada. The Hebrew word for revelation is yada. So I'm going to bring the, the Hebrew aspect of it. Today I dealt with the Greek aspect of it, okay? The next Sunday I'll be dealing with yada. The, uh, the Hebrew aspect, the foundation of what revelation is, okay? Yada is the knowledge between a husband and a wife which causes conception to occur. So when you know Jesus, conception has to occur. If you have revelation, you have to, that's what we call them concepts, okay? Insight will bring concept. A concept is what you publish, okay? It's something you've conceived. It comes through seeing from within, revelation, insight. That aha, this is something comedians are very good at. They might tell your story. And the conclusion of the story makes you burst out into laughter. Why? Because they gave you insight. You saw it in a way you never saw before. Or you saw the same thing you always knew, but in a, a different way. Or they presented to you something about yourself that gave you insight. And then you burst out laughing. It all, insight always brings joy. It brings laughter. Okay? But I'm going to teach you that next Sunday.
If you're watching and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer after me so that you may get saved. It starts with salvation before revelation can benefit you. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again for my justification. Today I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am now saved. Glory to God. That prayer that I've led you through comes through revelation. Revelation comes when you believe. If you believe, he begins to teach you. He begins to move you from just knowledge to revelation. Then when you start getting into the disciplines of tongues and fasting and worship and giving, giving always brings revelation. Always. Always. Yeah? It always brings revelation. I can give you so many examples in the Bible where somebody gave and there was a revelation. Saul, who became the King Saul, gave to the prophet Samuel and a revelation came. This is the one I talked to you about. Yeah, God tells Samuel, anoint him as king. The same Samuel goes to Jesse. They offered him gifts. So he starts looking for the king. No, it's not Eliab. No, it's not the other. It's not Shammah. Until David. And when David came, God said, Revelation, this is the one. Anoint him. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. So giving is fundamental. Don't give to become rich. You give for revelation. Once you've given for revelation, God will show you how to become rich in a revelation. All right? Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. Do you know how Alikon Dangote became rich? And this is a story he tells himself. He was on a plane. And this, this great man of God from Nigeria, what's his name now? He, he was a great, great, great minister. Yeah, he died. So this guy really needed to get onto the plane, but there was no seat. So Dangote gave up his seat. He gave like a ticket now. He gave up his seat for this preacher. The preacher looked at him and said, you will be rich as a result of this thing you've done for me. You shall be a rich man. You know how Nigerians talk. Yeah. Did it happen or not? Things just don't happen by themselves. Somebody has to open the door for you. It's not just your ingenuity. No. Somebody has to take you there. But you see, giving opens people up. Giving. Giving. Be a giver. Okay? Don't be stingy. Before you take care of yourself. Yeah? Think about the gospel of Jesus. And say, let me take this amount, even if it's small, and, and send it for the propagation of the gospel. Any moment you'll be taught, the Bible says it, the one who teaches you, share good things with that person. That is found in what? Is this 1 Timothy 6 verse 6? Now let's look for the scriptures. We'll reach for God's people. This is revelation. When you give, you get a revelation. Okay? But if you're stuck up with 10% and all that, you're under the law. It doesn't work. Okay? So when you hear a word that has touched your heart, that's why you see sometimes when preachers are preaching mm -hmm. and somebody has got a revelation, they run to the front with a little money. Mm -hmm. And the world thinks, look at these people. They are collecting money from people. But see, you don't have a revelation. That's why you're complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, is it second or first or second? Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at second. Yeah. Six. Okay, which one is? Can you people help me look for it? I'm not getting the scriptures. Share all good things. With, is it? Is this Titus? That, with those that teach you the word. Yeah, I need to get the scripture correctly. Yeah. So which one is it? It's some some of those scriptures, six verse six, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, just just do a quick search on Google. Uh huh. Galatians six six. Oh, it's Galatians six six. So I was saying Timothy. First Timothy. Just read it for me, please. Galatians 6.6. 6. You see, now we have to go to academics, gnosis. Mm -hmm. So we are not saying academics is not good. I would not have got the revelation if I didn't have the academic knowledge. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. So we consulted Google mm -hmm. because that's the level of gnosis. Google gave us the academic access mm -hmm. to what I couldn't remember. Galatians 6.6. 6. Now let's read it so that we can take you to Gnosko. Okay? Now, Gnosis has served as well. Yeah? So, what I'm going to tell you now is beyond Google. Okay? 
So let him that is taught in the word share unto him that te teacheth in all good things. As in, if the word of God has been taught to you, the word there is logos. So you need to be taught so that logos becomes rema or ginosko. Rema and ginosko is one of the same thing. Yeah. And the Bible says when you've been taught, share with a teacher good things. Okay? That's simple, isn't it? When you do, you'll be taught more. It's the, it's the relationship of teaching that is activating the giving. Are you seeing that? And the teacher is revealing. And when it's revealed, now you're on top of the world. So God speaks to you even in a dream, telling you, don't do that business, do this other one. Don't do this one, do this other one. Think of this, you know, God starts guiding your business and you start making money. And you say, you taught me things at work. Let me share a little bit with you. And then you get more revelation. So you just get richer and richer and richer through revelation, not through magic. That if you give, suddenly money will just come into your account. That's not what, that's, that's magic. God is not a magician. He's a loving father. All right. Great. Let me see who is online with us. Glory to Jesus. Uh, Jimna says, keep up the good work. Nell is watching. Jatham is online too. God bless you, Marion. Glory to God. She's there watching us as well. Yeah. She says, as I hear you speak anytime, I experience the love of God. Amen. Because I have the revelation of the love of Christ. So I can share it with you. Otherwise, I'd make all of you just to feel guilty. Yeah. Um, uh, Papa Lolo, God bless you. Uh, Anne, God bless you. My precious daughter Chebet, she's so I was smoking each other. <laughs> God bless you. She says, <laughs> nice what? Nice preaching, very nice analogy. Amen. Love you so much. Yeah. And she says, pass me to be fumigated. Exactly. You <laughs> Glory to God. Please share this with your friends. I love you so very much. All right. I love every single one of you. You're amazing and wonderful. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for more revelation on money. Mondays, I teach on money. Wisdom for finances. Revelation of how to become rich. Please pay attention. Always listen. These words will always help you. Otherwise, if you don't hear the word of God, the devil has preachers too. You'll hear them. And if you believe, you'll be on your way downwards, south. Okay? I love you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.